So you've just clicked on this video to learn how to make custom CSS, HTML, JavaScript cursors like these ones you see on screen right now, all customizable. You can change them, you can do animations with them, you can do whatever you want with these cursors. I'm going to show you how you can do that in this video, so don't forget to leave a thumbs up and let's get on with the tutorial. So as you can see here, we have a plef uh, bunch of different cursors here. You've got the standard one here, which is actually made with just HTML elements, no images at all. And you can animate as you click, it actually animates. Um, when you come in here, you have a little Fujita from Dragon Ball C one, where the cursor is actually the top left bit where he's pointing. Uh, and as you slide along here, you can see that cool little transition there. We tra change into this one piece cursor here, uh, which is U Luffy and his brother Ace. And then if we come over, we get a Sharingan and Sasuke one as well. So we're going to set all of these up and I'm going to show you how easy it is to do a bunch of custom cursors all on one side like this. And basically, yeah, let's just get on with the tutorial. So uh, what are you doing? The first thing we need is a folder with some images in. If you have images you want to use as custom cursors, you don't even need images. You can actually use HTML, CSS, anything you want. Anything you want as a cursor, you can probably do it. It's pretty easy. You can even use GIFs to animate them. Uh, but we're going to stick with images and HTML elements. So the first thing we have is a folder with index, uh, HTML file, a CSS file, and a JavaScript file, and three images. So I'm just going to close that sidebar there. And we are going to uh, start off by creating some HTML. In here, we're just going to say custom cursors. We're going to script source a main .js. So we're just going to make sure our, our file is connected up here. And also we're going to link our CSS file as well. There we go. They are now linked up. Now the first cursor we're going to do is a site wide cursor. So that is actually this cursor, the black one at top, which is everywhere on your site other than are inside these boxes where we have the custom ones in. So this will appear everywhere on your site. You'll be able to click, do what you want. And there you go. So that's, that's what that one is. So we're going to set that one up here. So this is just going to have a class of custom cursor and we're going to call this the site wide cursor. And there you go. Now in here, we're going to add a pointer. Now you don't need to do this. This is actually just so I can style a point in the middle and you can style it however you want. So this, this could be a square. You don't have to do a circle. You can do this however you want to do it. Whatever cursor you want to do. This is just a HTML version off site wide one. And there we go. We also then want to get our boxes as well. So we're going to get boxes and we're going to have three boxes down below. Uh, but we're going to do that once we've styled up this one. So let's go into our main and the first, oh, our CSS. And the first thing we're going to do is just reset the margin. We're going to reset any padding um, on the site to zero. And we're going to set the box size, oh, box sizing to border box. Just like that. Simple and easy. The next thing we're going to want to do is set our body's cursor to none. Now, this is just going to mean our cursor is disappearing. So if we change this from that to tutorial, this is going to show us the current one we have here. And if we just press F12, we should see our custom cursor there and our main.css is linked. Okay, guys, I just want to say this is actually because the body is so small when we first start. You can see our cursor no longer appears. We don't have a cursor on screen. If we uncomment this, you can see our cursor reappears. The reason it wasn't working is because body um, is obviously when we have nothing in the body, there's nowhere for the cursor to hover above. Um, and H so I just added HTML in there and now it will work fine. Um, so there we go. But we're going to leave that commented out for now because we want to see our mouse up until we have a custom cursor. So let's actually style our custom cursor here. Uh, we're going to give it a position of absolute, a top of zero, a left of zero, and a display of none. Now, the reason we're doing this is because we need it to be absolute position. So when we use transforms, it can move around wherever it wants freely. I mean, you could do it as relative, but then it's going to apply some positioning to the actual page. And we don't want it to affect the actual page's layout. So we're setting it as absolute. We can also probably set the C index to like 1 or 2 or 3 or even 99, whatever you want. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at default. That's why I say if obviously you find your cursor going behind certain things and you don't want it to, then obviously you'll need to set your cursor to a higher um, C index. So we're going to style our site wide area here and we're just going to give it a width of 30 pixels, a height of 30 pixels, 
uh, a border radius of 50% because it's going to be a rounded cursor and a border of two pixels solid black um and there we go we're not gonna be able to see this i'm just gonna comment out the display so we can actually see what this looks like and you can see that is up there so let's just go back down here and we want to get the pointer now so we want to say the pointer we set um we're just going to give this again enough of position absolute um we could say top 50 percent a left 50 percent um we also want it to have a transform translate minus 50 minus 50 that's just going to bring it to the middle um, so we don't have any issues. We obviously need a width on this. So we're going to set this to uh, five pixels by default. Um, another five pixels here. Uh, we'll also have a border radius of 50 pixel and a background color of black. Um, and let's just go back here, refresh it. There you go. We've got a little dot there and it's there. That's going to be our cursor. Now, the issue is this is not following our cursor, which isn't very cool. So let's go into our main, well actually first thing, let's display it as none now because we need that back um, and that way it will disappear so we no longer have it. But now we need to go in our JavaScript. Now the first thing we want to do is, well I'm just going to add a comment here saying site wide cursor um, because obviously we're going to have the site wide and the box bound cursors as well. And we want to get our cursor so we want to say site wide cursor like that and just set the document dot query selector to dot custom cursor.sitewide simple as that to get reference and then the next thing we want to do is we want to say when we enter the sites when our mouse is over the actual page um, we're going to do a function so we're going to say add event listener mouse enter and we're just going to pass through uh, an arrow function we're just going to say sitewide cursor dot style dot dot dis display um, and we're going to set this equal to block because that way we'll actually see it once it's on the page. Now, the reason we're actually setting the display is so when we come off the page, we can do a mouse leave event. So we're going to copy this and we're going to say on um, mouse leave, we're going to set this to none. That means when we come off the page, it's going to disappear. It's not just going to be sat on the screen there at the whole time. So let's see if this works. You can see it's there, but when we come off, it disappears. There we go. Perfect. So now we need to actually move the cursor. So what we want to do is say document dot add a fend listener. And this one is going to be mouse move. Oh, mouse move. And we are going to do something called track cursor. Just like that. So that's going to track out the position of our cursor, or we're going to create a function that tracks the position of our cursor. So let's do that now. So we're going to say function track cursor. We're going to pass through the event inside here. And all we want to do, this is actually really simple. We just want to say site wide cursor dot style dot transform. And we want to sell it equal to a translate. A translate of um, we're using template literals here so we can pass through some code with uh, dollar sign and uh, brackets there. And we just want to say client x minus, or sorry, just client x in pixels and fn.client y um, in pixels. And this is going to get us our position, so it's going to track our cursor. So let's go back. And there you go, you can see it's actually following our cursor. But the issue is it's actually off center. So the center of it is not where our cursor is, meaning when we click, it's actually not going to be the right place. So how do we fix that? Well, I'm going to actually go in here and we're going to get the width and the height of our cursor. So to do that, we're going to say width is equal to our site wide cursor um, dot client width. We're then going to get the height and set it to site wide cursor dot client height. And then what we're going to do is we're going to minus our width divided by two to give us half of the width. And we're going to do height divided by two as well here, which will give us our, um, I'm just going to break that down so you can read that easier. But this is just basically saying, um, get our X position. So the client X is actually our position of our mouse on the X and the client Y is our position of the mouse on the Y, which comes from the event, um, which comes through from the event listener. Once we have that going, what we're going to do next is obviously, so once we got the track, this should now be center. You can see it's actually now in the center of our screen. And as we move around, when we click that dot is actually going to be where we click, which is exactly 
what we want. Um, and that's that's really it to get the tracking for our cursor here. However, you can see our cursor is still on screen. But now because we have our cursor, we can actually go to our main CSS and uncomment our um, cursor none here. Go back to screen and there you go. Now our cursor is this dot. But when we click, it doesn't do anything. So as I'm clicking here, nothing's really happening. It's quite boring. It's just like following our mouse. So how do we make it a bit more exciting? Well, we're going to add an event listener, which makes us click. Um, and we're we'll just going to say sitewide.active. And then we're going to say, we're going to set the pointer to get a bigger width. So we're going to say, what's the current width? So we'll say 20 pixels and the height will be 20 pixels as well. And we just want to add a transition to our pointer. So we're going to say transition width 0 0.1 second and um ease in out and we're also gonna get the height at 0 0.1 seconds ease in out as well um and that will just allow it to tran transition smoothly between these two things and now the way we're going to add this active class to our site-wide cursor is we're going to add another event listener here so we're just going to say document dot add event listener mouse down um and we're just going to say site wide cursor dot class list dot add and we're just going to add the active class there use an arrow function there and there we go now we can copy this underneath and just say when we lift the mouse up we want to swap this from from adding it to removing the cursor there and we go back and we click you can see we get this nice little click pulsing there now, you may have noticed in my tutorial, it was actually the opposite way around. It started up here, and when you've clicked, it released. To do that, all you want to do is flip these values around here. So you could actually just copy this, paste that underneath, take these ones, and paste that there. And there you go. Now you've got it the opposite way. So if you wanted to do that, I actually prefer the other way, though, because it kind of gives us a pinpoint location where we click, and then it does the animation um, or the transition, which is nice. So now what about the box one? So let's say we actually have elements when we hover over a certain element, we want it to show a cursor. So we don't want a cursor the whole time, or maybe we do, but we also want cursors that have different cursors when we're hovering over something specific. To do that, we are going to set up our boxes to demonstrate. Now our boxes will have three boxes inside. Um, and in the first box, we are going to have a cursor, a custom cursor. So it's a custom cursor and this can be bound, box bound because these are going to be bound to the box um, and then we just want to give it a style of background image now again you could use the same um, cursor we did up here if you wanted to in these boxes to maybe change the color but I'm going to actually change out our cursor to use an image this time and obviously we have the images inside of my um, folder here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the first one to be our Dragon Ball C cursor. The second one is going to be our One Piece cursor. And finally, the last one is going to be our Sharing, sharing Gone cursor there. Um, and there we go. So that's going to be all three of our cursors. And that's all the HTML we need. So let's go back into our CSS and start styling the boxes. So under the pointer, we just want to get our boxes. Uh, we want to set a width of 100%, so it's the whole way. Display it as flex. Um, justify content center and align item center. You don't have, this isn't going to be how you style your boxes in your site or whatever you want the cursor to be on. This is just for demonstrating, sis. This is just going to make sure our actual um, boxes are sat in the middle of our page. And there you go. So I'm just giving a min height of 100 uh, screen width or viewport height as well, just so it takes up the whole page and it's dead center. We then want to get each box inside of our boxes. And we're going to set the position to relative because obviously we're going to be using some positioning inside for the cursor. We're then going to set the width to be 300, the height to be 300 pixels, and we're going to have overflow hidden. The reason for having overflow hidden, because unlike the site-wide cursor, when we go off screen or outside the box with our cursor, we're not going to make it disappear. What we're going to do is we're just going to make it follow our cursor still. 
which will give it the impression that our cursor is moving around. And when we transition between them, it's like they're transitioning into different cursors. You'll see what I mean once we actually add this in. Now we're going to get each box. So we're going to say boxes dot box, and we're going to get each child. So we're going to say mchild1, um, and we're just going to set a background color to be pale violet red. Let's copy this and paste it two more times. Um, and I'm just going to set this one oh, to be number two, and this will be a pale green, and this will be number three with a pale turquoise there. And that will give us three nice little colors to work with. We then want to get our box bound cursor. We're going to display this as blocked. We want these to be visible all the time and not when we just hover in the box. So we're going to overwrite our custom cursor of display none here. Um, we're then going to get our width of 100 pixels, a height of 50 pixels, because um, these are roughly the dimensions of the images. And we're going to get our background position to be top left, because we're using background images, we want to push it to the top left, because our cursor pointers for these images are actually in the top left. So this is where the clicker will be, um, and that's where we want to position the actual image. So we then want to get our background size and set this to contain because we want it to fit. We don't want anything being cut off. We want it to fit inside of our um, element. And we're going to set there to be no repeat because we don't want to see multiple cursors. We just want to see the one. We're then going to set a transition of, um, of the same we did up here, the width and the height. Um, because we're going to be adding in a box box bounds dot active class which we just basically set the width um, and the height a bit bigger so we're just going to set the width to 140 uh, and this to be 75 actually that should be 150 and there you go so once we click it'll get a lot bigger and it'll look pretty cool and there we go that's all the css we need now for the at the bottom, in our JavaScript, we just need to say our box of bound cursors. Well, you don't have to put comments. I just like to do it it's for tidiness. Uh, we're going to have a query selector of all, and we're going to get the boxes.box. This is going to give us all the boxes we want. We don't want to loop through the boxes because we need to get reference to each individual one. So we're going to say if i is less than boxes.length i++. Plus plus, and then we will say const box is equal to boxes i and then we'll have another const cursor equal to box.query selector custom cursor and there we go so this is just going to get our cursor so what we're going to do is we're going to get reference to our box and then we're going to use that box to find the cursor inside that specific box we now want event listeners for our box um, and for our, um, we basically we want to do similar events to these ones up here. So we actually want to basically copy all of these oh, events from our site cursor, bring them in that, into our um, for each loop here and add a, add it here. Now the only thing we're going to be changing is actually our box uh, the actual thing we're adding the listener to. So we're going to add the mouse enter for each box and we're going to set the display for the site wide cursor to be none. Now this will just mean our main cursor will disappear and it won't sit on top or behind our boxes. Um, and then obviously when we uh, leave the box we want to set it back to be blocked. And then for our mouse move, we want to keep, oh, we also want this as box leave as well. We will actually want to keep this as a document mouse move, but we want to change the function. We're going to say track box cursor. Um, and we want to do something called binding. Now, binding is going to basically say that this of this, <laughs> this function is going to be equal to not our global. Because if we just said track box cursor, the it will be its uh, scope will be scoping to the document and not the box whereas we want it to scope to the box that might sound confusing but i'll try and explain it when we actually write out the function there we also want to get our cursor here and swap out these cursors so when we click down on our page um it adds the active class to these cursors as well 
Um, and there you go. So now you can see here we have track box cursor and bind box. So we want to get this and create a function for it. So we're going to say function track box cursor and we're going to get the effect. Now if we log in here our um, this, this here, this is what our bind is referenced to. So binding um, this function to a box, meaning our box is in each loop, we're actually setting the, this value equal to this box because we can't just pull through a box in here, which means we can say const box is equal to this. Um, if we left this without a bind, box, this would be equal to document instead, um, which is not what we want. Um, and just to demonstrate, I'm just going to show you that in action. You can see this is what it actually looks like. And if we just open up our console here, you can see how messy that is. Anytime I move the cursor, it's showing us new boxes and it's getting reference to our three boxes. However, if we go back and we rem remove the bind from this and we refresh and I move, you can see it's getting reference to document, which is not what we want. We want it to be referenced to the actual box. So let's remove the console log for this and then we can actually carry on with the rest of this. So we also want to get reference to our cursor again because obviously we're not bringing through our cursor from here. Although we could probably bring our cursor through. Um, we're not going to in this case. Uh, we're going to actually just do a query selector. So we're going to say box.query selector uh, custom cursor just like how we had it before. Then we want to get our box rectangle. So the rectangle or the position of our box. To do that, we can say box.get bounding client rect. And this is going to get us the left, top, right and bottom positions of our box, um, which we need to tell the cursor where to be positioned. And I'll explain this once we actually write that function out. We don't want to get the x and set the x position of our cursor equal to event.client x. Now this is obviously our x position of our mouse, but this is relevant to the whole page, whereas we want it relevant to the box we're in. So to do that, we just need to minus our box's position in the world. So we can say box rex.left, and that's going to get the position of where the box is relative to the whole page and minus it away from that, leaving us with just the value of where this X is inside of our box. That may seem confusing, but it's actually quite straightforward. If we go Y here, change this to Y, and we can change this to top, because we want to know where the top position is. This is going to give us an accurate X and Y for inside of our box element. We then want to get our cursor, our style, and our transform, we want to sell it equal to, again, some template literals and say translate um, X pixels and Y pixels, just like that. If we go back and we refresh, we shouldn't have an issue, but we do. Let's figure out what that issue is. Okay, guys, I am shouting at myself because I just spent way too long trying to bug this. I accidentally put the client Y in lowercase. The Y should be in uppercase, same with the X on the client. That should now fix our issue. And there you go. You can see we have our cursors following our mouse position. So just to do some debugging here, just so you can actually see, we're going to turn off our hiding our cursor so we can see our cursor. You can see they're following it exactly where the pointer should be. Now, you may notice that these ones in the boxes are not centered. That's because the cursor is set to be point. You can see like Vegeta's hand is pointing up here where the cursor is. Luffy has a little, little pointer there and same with the Sharingan. Now, the reason for that, um, we don't, we no longer, the reason that happens is because we're no longer in our main.js, we're no longer taking away the width and the height of the cursor. We're just leaving it as it is and adding it in the top left. And that's how we get this really nice smooth thing here so you can if you leave it in between it looks like you've got Vegeta's hand with Ace there and the same with um, Luffy and uh, Sasuke there and there you go you've got these different custom cursors you can do and as you click you can see these guys get bigger same here um, and it's really cool to do um, so there you go we can mess around with this you can mess around with this your homework for today is to do some animated cursors like this but animated you could do some pixels some 
particle effect ones. You could do one which is on fire, like an anime GIF. Um, I'm going to leave it up to you to figure that out. And then in the future, if this video gets enough likes and enough views and you guys want to see it, I'll create an animated version of this. So you can have some animated custom cursors. I'll do a bunch of different ones and show you how you can do CSS, HTML, and GIFs and all the cool tricks and uh, stuff like a cut, um, an actual canvas based one as well. Well, I'll show that all off at a later time, but I'll, um, if you guys want to see it. So let me know down below. But for now, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like. It helps. Subscribing also helps. And don't forget to leave a comment down below. Anything you want, even if it's just um, spaghetti. That's the word for today, spaghetti. I'd like to see spaghetti in the comments. Um, but anyway, guys, if you have any questions, you get stuck or anything like that, jump in the Discord. The link is down below. Um, we're a bunch of friendly people and we're willing to help out when we can. There should be someone around to help. If nobody is around to help, I hopefully should be around at some point to help you out when I'm free. But for now, guys, thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.